They go by several names, Ego Riser, Ego Box, even Guitar Riser. What it is, is, is essentially just a platform to raise you up in the air to add a little extra excitement when you're doing a solo or when a singer is belting that note. Today I'm going to go over how I built mine and how I did it on the cheap. There are many styles of these boxes out there that you can purchase between one and three to four hundred dollars. And generally what it is, is just a rectangle box with a graded metal top. Now the options that make it more expensive are when you add lights. A lot of times there's a light shining from below. And sometimes if you want to add handles and even some people put a smoke machine. But I wanted to make sure that mine didn't hinder me playing my guitar or the singer singing. So personally, I don't like the light shining from below because what happens is the light will be shining and it becomes a little blinding and then you just get a silhouette of your hand when you're trying to play a really hard guitar part. There's a good reason that spotlights come from above and not below. Now for some of these supplies, the reason I was able to get them so cheap is that I have a friend who works at a sign shop. Now don't worry, you don't need to have a friend that works at a sign shop. The big thing is you would not believe how much great stuff they throw away in their giant trash bin. To start off, I needed to figure out the height and the width of the box I wanted to use. Now I was in another band doing sound and they had a guitar riser and their guitarist actually jumped up on the riser but tripped, fell off the stage and landed on his face in his guitar and somehow he kept playing the show like a rock star. I don't, I don't understand how he did it. So I wanted to make sure mine wasn't too tall and wasn't too short so that it was still had enough height. For the width and the depth, what I did was I used a platform and I stepped on it to make sure that I could have both feet on there comfortably without feeling like I was going to lose my balance. And then I had our singer stand on it and he's six foot two just to make sure it would fit everybody. Now I wanted something eye catching, but I didn't want the light shining from below because again, I didn't want it to blind me. So what I decided to do was add a little band branding and I put our logo on the front and I wanted to backlight it with a light. Remember my friend that works at the sign shop? Well, for some reason they threw away this gigantic roll of Lexan. And what Lexan is, is it's basically like a softer plexiglass and it came already pre-frosted which if you've seen my video on the tip jar, you'll know disperses the light and makes it glow even better. What I did was I reverse cut out our logo on the front so that only the letters would shine through. And originally when I built it, I used LED strip lights behind. Then I got into DMX lighting and that allows me to sync up my light show with all the lights on the stage and my box. The way I accomplished that was I just bought a cheap par light off of Amazon and I set it up to run. Now I wanted a little bit more style on my box, so what I did was on the front I bought carbon fiber vinyl. If you've ever seen this stuff, it's textured and it looks really, really cool. The one problem is, is that you cannot take the carbon fiber vinyl and put it straight on the raw wood because the glue will not stick. So what I used was some Loctite. Your other option is you could paint it, wait for it to dry, and then stick it to the front. For the back and the sides, I just painted those black because nobody's going to see those and nobody's going to care what that looks like. Now I wanted some extra special bling as well as I needed some sort of tread for the top so it wouldn't slip. So what I did was I got some diamond plating from Home Depot and you can get this at Lowe's or almost any hardware store. And it's a really thin sheet of metal. And what I did was I wrapped it around a piece of plywood. Now to actually attach this, I did have to use some Loctite in there again and clamp it down to make sure that it dried. And then after that, I bent it over the edges and I hammered it with a rubber mallet. And once I had it in place, I just had a bunch of screws that with hats on it and I screwed those in. I did reinforce underneath with a 2x4 across the lid to give it a little bit more stability and I ran a piece across the front this way to keep the box from splitting if somebody stood on it. Also to give it a little bit more stability because I cut out that big chunk in the front. To attach the lid I didn't want to screw through the top and ruin the top so what I did was I bought some L clamps off of Amazon and I just screwed them in in strategic spots to hold the lid down. I also screwed some in the corners just for added benefit of stability. I'm really happy with how this turned out. This works perfect for me and you can customize this box in any sort of way for your band. Now personally, I really like the carbon fiber look. I think it makes it look a little classier and the shine is really eye catching on the top and I really like the back glow of our logo. It gives that brand recognition. Now total cost for this job for me was actually only $105 and the reason it was so cheap is I did have some leftover plywood from my build on the drum riser. And if you haven't seen that one, you can check it out here. My advice if you decide to build one of these and use it is do not overuse it. Because if you're using it all the time, it's not going to be that impressive and people are going to get numb to seeing it happen. But if you use it for just those epic solos or an epic note that you need to belt, it's really going to impress people and they're going to have a fun time. After all, we're here to entertain people. So let's entertain them.